Okay. Size 18. That GC means Green Caddis, that Green Caddis Outfitters. It's actually over in Cincinnati with their $2 a pack uh, hook sale. Um, that's where these came from. Uh, when I ordered, they were out of size 20, or we'd be time size 20. I'm using uh, 70 denier. This is dark brown UTC Ultra Thread. And I'm going to just cover the hook shank completely. I'm going to stop right back by the bend. I'm not going to go down into it much. Okay. Normally, this is where you would start to t you'd tie in your hackle. You would tie in a little piece of tinsel um, and anything else that you were going to add to this. But we're not going to do it that way. I'm going to take a little bit of dubbing wax and get it on my fingers. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to coat that thread with the wax. And then for the body, I'm using this Caddis Life Cycle dubbing. The ginger color here. Uh, it's a little sparkly. Um, it, it just, it's really nice. I like this stuff a lot. And for a size 18, we're talking a little bitty pinch. Like a little, little bitty pinch. Twist this into a noodle. Nice, tight touching wraps on this all the way up. We're going to stop this. Before we get to the eye of the hook. Now leave a little room for our elk air. Pardon me. And even with that little bitty pinch that I took, I still took too much. So I'm going to scrape some of that off of there. And then just to hold that loose end in place. Okay, now, for a hackle for this, I'm using this. It's a, it's actually a whiting bugger pack. Dry fly hackle just really isn't, to me, big enough. This is the, uh, this is the ghost barred white whiting bugger pack hackle. I'm going to take one of these smaller deals down here in the front. Right there. And then just strip out that cruft. I'm going to leave this stem on this fly a little bit longer when I tie this in, just to make it easier to, uh, to manage the whole thing. Tie that down. And then... I like for these, I like a good bit of hackle. So I'm going to take kind of, not touching wraps, but closer spiral wraps back to the back. Kind of load that guy up. Now that we're at the back, I'm going to take my hackle pliers. I'm going to hold this right here. Now, the one main thing that I do differently here, <clears throat> anybody figured it out yet? Just raise your hand if you see it. No? Okay. Well, I've ended my hackle back here, and normally then we would tie with our thread to close off our hackle, but my thread's up front. Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to wind my thread. This increases the, the, uh, the durability of this fly dramatically. If you 
just wiggle your thread through here and we overwrap the stem of that the stem of that that hackle feather if we go all the way to the back and then again all the way to the front the hackle on this thing is just about bulletproof There we go, just like that. Now I'm going to pick that up, the rest of that hackle, and I'm going to get rid of that right at the butt. Okay. Now on to the fun part, <clears throat> the, the elk hair. Using uh, bleached elk hair, and I like this particular patch. Oops, sorry. I like this particular patch more than most because it has this variation. It's not all just this bleach blonde effect. It also has some darker browns down here, and that's where we're going to play at tonight. These are a lot longer than I need, and I, I have a shorter... I have patches with much shorter body hair on them than, than what we're going to use here. But I just don't like the really super light effect. So we're going to use... we're going to waste a little hair. Also, this is the point where if you're inclined, you can cut the top part of your hackle here at an angle uh, to, I mean, I guess the idea is to give the, the elk hair some place to lay. I don't do that. I've never done that. Do it or don't. It's up to you. Um, I think the elk hair lays just fine with that hackle right where it's at. So I'm looking for a nice size clump here. I want something, if I look, if I hold that up to, if I hold that clump up to my hook, I want it to be longer than the gape between the shank and the, the hook and the point of the hook. And I'm just going to clip that off. And I'm going to drop it in my hair stacker. Tips first. Drop it in there, tips first. And then... Bang it. Try to line those tips up. This is the fun part. I'm sorry that you're missing it. Okay. Now, there we go. That's good enough. Grab those out of there. I don't worry at this stage of the game. I don't worry about trimming these at all. Like, and you'll see why here in a second. But <clears throat> I'm going to leave these things a mile long, just to make it easier to do all of the things that I have to do. Um, I like the blackish tip. Can you see the blackish tips there? I like the blackish tips in this. I think it. Uh, I think it really sets the fly off. Anyway, um, I like to leave my hair a little longer. Than the hook. Some people will shorten this up uh, to about there, have the tips of their elk hair at just about the, the end of the hook, the bend of the hook. I like it just a little bit longer than that. So I'm going to leave mine a little bit longer and I've got a death grip on these on these elk hairs. As I'm putting thread wraps on this, I've got a death grip. I do not want this stuff wrapping around the hook shank. So hang on to it and pull down on that thread and put four or five tight turns on that thread so that when you let it go, it's not riding around the back of the hook. All right. And I mashed my, <laughs> I mashed the hackle. I put stuff on the back. We can fix it. Okay. Now take your long end here, pull back on this. And put a few turns right behind the eye of the hook. And by a few, I mean three or four. All right. Now, to make this head more durable than you might normally make it with an elk hair caddis, I'm going to split all of this long hair here. And I'm going to put some, some thread wraps 
right in these splits. It gives me the opportunity to put more wraps on this head without bunching up a, a lot of thread wraps right behind the eye of the hook. I, what I, I don't want to bury the eye of the hook. Okay. And then that side is, when that part is done, I'm going to gather those guys up. Cut that out at an angle. And then, now watch, watch me cut my thread here doing this, trying to give it a haircut too soon. Watch, it's going to happen. Hey! All right, and now when I whip finish this, instead of trying to whip finish it right behind the eye, I'm going to whip finish it right behind the head. Just because it gives me more room. And I'm only doing three or four turns anyway on a fly this size. Seat that down, clip your thread, and now I've never tied one of these that didn't need a little bit of work when I was done. There you go. That is my light elk hair caddis. And um, roll this guy around here, and I'm going to use, but here it actually makes a difference. I'm, gonna, I'm using water-based fly head cement. Have you guys ever heard of this stuff? Water-based fly head cement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit those thread wraps on both sides. And I use water-based here because if you use Sally Hansen or if you use uh, hard head cement or if you use, you know, whatever, you're adding weight to a dry fly. And what we're trying to do, I leave the tinsel off and I leave all this other stuff that adds weight. I leave it off because I want this fly to float. I don't want this fly to sink. So if you leave off all that weight producing or that weight adding stuff, it's less effort to get your, your dry fly to, you know, stay dry. So there you go. It needs a little, it needs a little hair styling here on the tackle, but... That is my light L-Care Caddis.